at 6.30 a.m. preoccupied for the, with the rest of my life and my well-being. Did you? It's like laying there in a sweat, trying to go back to sleep, wide awake. I was like, everything must be done today. Uh, so that's why we're a little bit later in the day. Oh, like I'm ever really earlier on time for these. But yeah, I took care of some practical needs around the house. Our new moon occurred at, I believe, 8.35-ish Pacific, 10.35-ish Central, and 10.30, or sorry, 11.35-ish um, a.m. Eastern Time. So this is actually a nice, powerful time to be having this because technically during the hour or the moment of the new moon, you're supposed to be sort of void anyway. And it's the growing of the light into the vessel that is the most powerful. So it's the beginning sparks of that new moon energy as the light begins to grow again that is the most potent. And so that's the best time to do your manifestations and your rituals and things like that. So I'm glad we're sitting together talking now. Um, I just hope this uh, uploads quickly. Sometimes if it's a new moon or a full moon, like my uploads can be kind of crazy long for some reason, but we're just going to claim and name a fast and smooth upload tonight. Are you with me? I know you are. I know you're already there. So the new moon in Taurus, <clears throat> what this energy is, is right now and where we are in our story I'm going to pause and say, if you haven't already, this week in particular, each day of the daily videos has been like a major class for the day. Um, if we look at what we do sort of like soul school and each week has these assignments for us to progress on our journey, this week was poised to have immense revelation and catalytic events possibly and for it to stir our reflection into where we are turning our focus and is it in alignment with like what we value and what we're trying to build for the long term or are we falling prey to instant gratification because here's the thing so we just came out of before i jump ahead Every day this week is helpful and it goes into unpacking each part of this initiative lesson that we're kind of finding ourselves within right now. This initiation is sort of like entering into a labyrinth or an obstacle course with like uh, gauntlet elements and like booby traps and things um, hidden within. And there's tricks and there's um, and there's tricksters and there's friends and there's foes and, the, and no, nobody looks like who they, they seem. And so it's all designed to sort of test where we're at as far as leaving the old life behind, having a chance to start on this new timeline. We've done a quantum jump. The new timeline has started. So we're at the end of, and final words on that, just know that each day unfolds the lessons in more specific areas of our lives in more depth and detail. So probably go back and watch those. Definitely do. So 2022 finally wrapped up at the end of winter and the spring brought about our new moons, like the Aries new moon, that first initial one, that brought about the beginning energy of the year. Only we were going to be thwarted by an immediate um, roll into the Omar, which is a seven week period that comes after Passover. Passover, we are exposed to a lot of really intense direct light from the Creator, and our vessel is like charged up with all this power, but it requires a process to ground that, right? To, to ground the up level. Already on par what we've been doing, right? Okay, we're now this new person. We've just come out of Egypt, left the old behind. 
Now we're being reborn into the year and now the tests begin where we can now try to break in the new shoes of this new identity, this new reality that we're trying to build in accordance with our more transcended consciousness that was before. And we're trying to practice self-control so that we can actually use our divine inheritance of free will. If we're not taking our time and being mindful with our choices and our actions and our reactions, then we are just in an animalistic state of consciousness where we are reacting to the elements and changing circumstances and we are triggered and we react in defensiveness, we react in anger, we react in lust, we react in hunger, um, but we are in a state of reaction. And so that puts us in a victimized state or in what is called effect consciousness rather than cause consciousness. So we have this new chance to, like collectively, the whole world, the every soul on earth has a chance right now in 2023 to really start fresh and be this higher level of person that they've always dreamt of, that they've always sort of imagined for themselves. But it requires that we get down into the nitty gritty. This isn't broad strokes, right? This isn't just like, you know, oh, well now I'm going to change my job title and then, you know, buy a new car and then that'll be that. Like it's, it's really about the depth of our motivations learning ourselves on a deep level, like where our patterns come from and how they've affected our life up until now and being aware of that and learning it so that they do not, they're not in the driver's seat any longer, right? We've been on default setting and we've had a faulty hard drive that has been riddled with viruses. And so now it's like we've been trying to do all this reprogramming, right? And so, Eclipse season came, which was the final, like, think of it as a divine storm that came through to blow out anything that was outdated, that anything you were still clinging to, anything that was false or precarious or um, unsustainable or toxic or not in alignment anymore, soul contracts that were complete and just like continuing on cords being cut, uh, patterns being left, habits being left behind, um, relationships changing. So, so many things happened during that eclipse season that was like, all right, this is your last chance to swab the decks so that you can go forward with a clean slate. And if you continue to hold on to the old life, it's going to get very, very, very uncomfortable. So the universe did some cleanup work for us over the eclipse season. And so there was a lot of chaos in the air, right? And Mercury went into retrograde. So we had a chance to look back and review and consider what's faulty, what's sustainable, what is nurturing, what, is, what has long-term potential. So now, finally, all the chaos is over, eclipse season is over, Mercury has gone direct, we're still in the shadow energy of all of the effects of what has just happened. Um, <clears throat> so that will dissipate and things will get clearer as we come more into focus. But it is beginning like our sort of, it's like this, the engine is starting, right? We've had these kind of like false starts, like the, in, the engine just hasn't like turned over. And that has, there's a, a few reasons for that. Um, so Taurus full moon, let's just talk about the full moon for a second. This is a moment where we are connecting with the themes of Venus. So Venus from a Tauran perspective, like Venus loves sensuality. Venus loves smells and tastes and fabrics and, and, and senses and experiences and romance and symphony and art and beauty. Um, Venus, think of the goddess Venus of romance, of love, like of art. Um, so 
Venus also, because they are materially preoccupied, they're also preoccupied with long-term value, long-term security, long-term stability. So they're, they're earthy and they're grounded and they're good at making, um, making money and providing sustenance and building um, their physical world up and maintaining that and sustaining it. Um, Taurans on the uh, shadow side though can be stubborn. They can want to refuse forward movement. Um, they want to refuse innovation. They are very slow to move forward. Um, they can be actually lazy is one of the things that they can fall prey to. Um, and, you know, hard-headed. <laughs> no offense. I, a lot of my um, planets and things fall in Taurus and I'm a cusp, so I get it. Um, and, and Taurans are slow to change. They're, they make gradual progress. So this is about shifting our focus onto what we value and putting our energy into, even though it might be uncomfortable, depriving ourselves of instant gratification to instead invest our energy into something that's going to give us more value in the long run. So it's about like big picture thinking. It's about slow and steady progress. Um, it's about building a legacy, right? Taurus, is about long-term commitment and devotion and step by step okay it's solid um earth mother nurturing so yeah taurus is very beautiful and very soft and very um you know beauty oriented uh, but also very practical so there's a real balance there. So try to use that energy. And it's kind of like, you know how we got the double dose of the Aries new moons? Well, it's like we've been in Taurus season all month and we're really just finishing up and now we get a Taurus new moon, which is going to give the whole next month that Taurus energy. Whatever the new moon is in, that's the seed level consciousness for the whole month. So basically we just got back to back Taurus seasons as well as we did kind of that that ultra boost of Aries. So um, on to some other of the astrology. So you might find, sorry, right now, that you want to take care of business, um, get into healthy routines, take care of things that need to be taken care of and getting organized. Um, we're getting very um, clear and honed in on the details of like what are the structures that are going to allow for our um, goals to, to actually be able to be met, right? So how do we show up for that on a, in a practical, hands-on, 3D, material way, day after day after day, on a daily basis? So we are going to shift our attention away from things that aren't returning value or that aren't aligned with like our with the things that are on our plate. We only have so much bandwidth and so much time, so it's important that we don't scatter our energies. Whew, excuse me. So, yes, one thing that's going to help with that is that Mars has been in Cancer watery, emotional cancer, um, homey, you know, wanting to be comfortable cancer. And so Mars has not been super motivated to do a lot like we usually are. I'm an Aries and so usually I'm just like go, 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 very driven, very focused. But even myself the past several weeks I've just been like, Ugh, like I haven't felt like doing as much as I normally do. I'm not as on it. I wasn't, you know, I haven't been as focused. And it's all almost like today, it's like I feel the shift happening. Because tomorrow on um, May 20th, Mars is going into Leo. Now while Mars has been in Cancer, we may have felt more emotionally impulsive. Or we may have been really driven to get to the bottom of like what has affected our emotional security. Uh, maybe we've been working on those issues 
all I keep, I just heard like trying to dry it up, right? The fire trying to go in and dry some of that deluge up and, and absorb some of that leftover um, emotional baggage so that we can go forward, right? With like a new mindset and a new clean slate, not encumbered by falling into old emotional patterns again and old habits and old behaviors. Okay, so um, tomorrow, Mars moves into Leo. Leo is a fire sign and it is, so is Mars. And so, or Mars is the fire, uh, is associated with the fire element. And Leo is a little bit more mature than Aries. And so Leo is like all the fire and like energy, young, dumb, full of cum kind of thing, um, but also a little bit more committed and devoted to taking action and continuing on with it. So uh, Leo is also more focused um, and really charismatic and like out in the spotlight, just really shining and taking the lead. So I think that we're going to feel a boost of willpower and drive and motivation, but we have to temper that so that it doesn't, it's not like our ego that starts taking over and it's not our, our ego's will, the will of the lower self that is, um, that is trying to get its way um, for self-serving purposes. So we have to be careful and check our ego um, and make sure that we are leaning towards the energy of active desire, um, where you're really like, you, you feel the desire for something and you're willing to take action. You're willing to take the steps to do what needs to be done to like, get it, get it done. Um, so that's what's called an active desire within the four phases of creation. Um, we are feeling more assertive, but we need to watch out not to become aggressive. Um, it might feel like seven of wands energy where we're like ready to stand up for ourselves and speak up and like set boundaries and like claim what's ours and all that stuff. But we need to not be too domineering or aggressive or overbearing about it. Um, just try to taper that and sweeten it and soften it. Um, let's see, what is it that we're fighting for? What do we want to do? What are our impulses showing us, right? So maybe like examine your impulses. In some ways, those fiery impulses are good. It gets you off your ass and on to trying something, right? If we're too calculated, it's like we never want to take a risk. We never put ourselves out there to try anything. So a little bit of impulsiveness is good. However, a lot of it where it's out of control and you're not using it consciously is absolutely destructive. So impulse is a very, very nuanced dose. And you have to be wise about timing and your motives and consequences. You have to be able to troubleshoot when you're feeling impulsive. So it's like, you've got to check yourself a little bit, but then, you know, that some of that energy is good. It helps you start things. It helps you take risks and chances. So, and it helps you put yourself out there. Um, so let's see, Mars has been in Cancer, kind of watering up our emotions and kind of watering down our impulses. Um, Leo is fixed fire energy. It's direct, focused, and contained. Loyal and committed, focused, fiery, passionate, energetic. Um, let's see. So connected to new moon in Taurus. Highlighting what we want to plant and grow. Oh, so with Leo connecting with this new moon in Taurus, it's really highlighting the seeds that we want to plant now because this is the seed level of the next six months. And this is the first moment that we've had where we have fertile ground, earth, Taurus, to plant seeds in after the, the heyday uh, and mayday of eclipse season. So now is the best time so far this year to really dream about what it is that you want, but don't get lost in the dreaming. Cut through the bullshit and actually start taking action and get like your ass to pavement. 
Um, go and read Instagram, my Instagram post for today. I'm not probably not going to do a video about it because we're, we're kind of talking about it here. Generally, it was really speaking to the energy of the, the new moon today. Um, but today, I, I'm probably just going to do this video for us. So, um, yeah, it's really going to impassion us to plant those seeds and tend that garden. Um, let's see. And this is going to be, we're going to feel like planting what we want to grow for the long term. Now, backing up to today's reading, over the weekend, maybe initially during this period, we still have a little bit of that inner conflicting desire of having a little bit of a hard time leaving behind the old the old stories, the old patterns, the old things that we're used to and moving into the new beginning, right? There's gonna be a period of time where everything's so exciting and we are happy to be done with the old and we are feeling like a little bit like we just graduated so we kind of wanna have like a summer break kind of mood for a minute. So if you don't feel yourself or you you notice that your situation is not developing as fast as you want it to just be at ease like enjoy this moment like meander like allow it to develop at its own pace because you can't force seeds to sprout you can't force grapes to be ripe so and, and the right thing can be wrong if you if it's taken in the wrong season so timing is important right now and we have to trust that. So right now it's important to maintain our desire for what we want, even if there's some turbulence, even if there's some on off, is this job gonna come through? Oh, I thought that opportunity was gonna work out. Like hold faith. One of the tricks of the opponent, of the adversary, is to get us to into despair. If we lose hope, then all the energy that we've put into something, we lose. It's if we can maintain hope, even in the midst of uncertainty, that even in the midst of failure, if we don't become despairing and if we don't lose hope, then all of that energy is then transferred into the next thing, into the next blessing. So do not get discouraged. Do not despair about anything right now because that is exactly the trick that would come along to try to foil us right before we get our big victory. So stay vigilant, stay focused. Keep an active desire for what you want. And then practice restriction by saying, you know what, if that thing showed up right now, I wouldn't even accept it at this moment. I want it to be at such the right time, things are so ready that there is no shadow of a doubt and I am so let go of it that I won't even, I'm, I'm open to receiving, but I, I don't even want it yet. Like I only want it when the creator is absolutely sure that I'm ready to have it. That is the kind of letting go and certainty and desire where you're surrendered. You're not giving up on what you want. Even though you're expecting it, that it might look bleak at moments. You're not giving up on what you want. You're not throwing in the towel. You're going to stick it out for a minute, okay? And you're going to believe and you're going to practice certainty because what do we know about this year? Most of this year we're in creation phase three, which is the phase that tests your certainty. It's the phase where you have to keep making an effort even though it doesn't look like it's going to pay off. So we have to maintain the desire because it's the desire that fuels the manifestation. Without the desire, nothing happens at all. So the, the, the opponent will try to foil us by throwing water on our desire, by making us feel like foolish, um, off like our rocker, we're crazy, you know, delusional, oh, you know, irresponsible, so flighty, like why would we think this? You know, just trying to shit in our cereal so we lose our desire, we feel shame, we feel guilt, we're like, oh, why did I even? Don't let any of those things happen. Just put on a blindfold, pretend nothing is gonna happen for six months. Because six months, October, looked like the energy was changing into the creation phase four. So pretend nothing's gonna happen for six months, but just show up anyway. 
Show up with your desire, keep taking steps, but be relaxed about it. Don't be looking for results, just be in the moment. Be genuine, be tuned in to your guidance, and turn all your attention and your focus and your resources into yourself, into that self-care, into that self-love, into all of these routines and, and, and practices that you have now set into, into place. Do your due diligence to follow those steps by step by step every day, little by little, and continue on in a commitment. But I, I really do think that it's, it's not going to look solid for a minute. And I think that this is part of our testing is that every few weeks, it's like we're going to feel a little bit more empowered. And then we're gonna come up against a challenge that's gonna test us with one of our old patterns or one of our old issues or one of our old shadow aspects that we've been trying to reintegrate, right? And accept about ourselves. So take it slow. Don't be quick to act um, because tests will be presented and expanding opportunities will also be presented and you have to learn how to discern what's happening and test yourself, you know, is this does this meet like the things that I that I'm asking for that I authentically need and desire on my checklist or am I having a compromise in all these different ways? Am I settling, right? Is my self-worth there? Am I do I have a, a sense of deservingness and trust that the universe is going to, you know, bring me to my ultimate fulfillment? Okay, then I don't need to make a rash choice because I feel desperate and scarce that this is the only opportunity, right? Those who are certain of the outcome can, can afford to wait and wait without anxiety and wait in patience. And so certainty doesn't necessarily mean that you know exactly the way everything's going to work out. It just means that you know that no matter what, you're ultimately going to be taken care of and not left for dead. <laughs> so everything is going to be fine. Ultimately, you will align with what's truly yours. It's just that there is a process of getting there. And so we are in that process now. So the things that are happening are ex happening exactly like they are supposed to, to present you with just the right tests to, to gauge where you're at in your progress. So take your time, observe yourself without judgment, and then think about, okay, well, how am I being triggered or am I being triggered? Am I handling this like really great? Like look at my progress, right? You know, give yourself credit too where credit's due. And then choose carefully and slowly with consciousness how you want to create, how you want to act, how you want to respond, right? Be proactive rather than having to learn from difficult trials and tribulations. Um, let's see. Okay, fiery, passionate energy, new moon in Taurus. Um, what is the material expression of the essence we want to create? I'm gonna say that again. What is the material expression of the essence we want to create? So usually when we're getting into the manifestation, we want to focus on the essence of what we want to create because we don't want to put any hardcore labels or timestamps on anything or um, mess with anybody's free will. So we usually want to take like the, the essences of things um, and the, the uh, qualities and aspects about them rather than specific places, companies, people, what have you. Um, at least when it comes to things that affect like human beings because of free will and, and all of that. And it slows the universe down because the universe, the more honed in you are on what it is about what it is that you desire, what you like, but less rigid about like the specifics of the presentation of how it shows up, then the universe has more options and it could get it to you faster. So that is why we, we usually think of the essence of what we want so that there are many ways that it can come in. However, in this particular case, we are looking for material ways to express the essence of what we want. So now that we're clear on the essence of what we're trying to create, now it's time to create it, right? Now it's time to surround yourself and create and do and behave in the way that you need to, to be in that life. Um, okay, so on May 16th, Jupiter moved into Taurus. 
which brings us all kinds of expansion and positivity and optimism and good fortune and good luck to all of those Taurus themes of Venus, love, money, security, beauty, all the wonderful romantic luxuries and sensualities and all of it. However, the shadow side of that is that we can fall prey to hedonism and overindulgence and overspending. We can fall back into addictions and habits and patterns if we're not careful. Um, so, or we can thwart our progress, right? Say you've been trying to save money and then you splurge on a bunch of like things that you didn't expect you went to Target. We all go to Target. We all spend more than we should at Target. Um, like, you know, probably the amount of what we have to spend on some month's bills, but so say we accidentally go to Target. It's like, just stop going to Target. <laughs> Whatever you get at Target that you need, order it next time. Um, not on Target.com and only look up that thing. Like set yourself up so that you're not falling into your old traps and so that you're, you're making better habits for yourself. So be careful not to get too sensual or materialistic or even egotistical or obsessed with um, the physical around that time because Jupiter is expanding these themes. So it's like we, we want to expand them in positive ways. Like there might be better opportunities to make more money, right? Or we have ideas about ways we can incorporate like um, ways to make more money in our life or, you know, ways to incorporate more fun or, you know, more ideas about how we can change our day around so that we can get more of what we want into the daylight hours. Who knows what it is, but Jupiter is expanding it for you right now. So that always comes with strengths and shadow. And you get more of the strengths, the more of the shadow aspect you overcome. Um, let's see, expanding money, security, pleasure fulfillment however if you haven't done the shadow work it can expand your insecurities your habits your addictions your patterns your codependency overindulgence hedonism overspending wasting energy and resources on the short term like uh, instant gratification versus long-term value so don't spend your resources and energy on instant gratification rather than long-term value practice restriction Practice self-control, hold out for now, and like sit in the discomfort of waiting so that you can have what's better in the long run, something of more value or something that is more sustainable or long-term. But if you get, if you just take now, it's just not gonna be ready or right. Um, okay, expanding a plan or strategy or structure, healthy or efficient and practical routines. And then finally, Mars squares Jupiter on May 22nd and expands our fiery energy and our assertiveness and our personal and inner willpower and drive along with that like Mars moving into Leo. Uh, but it can also, I mean, it will also expand our willpower and determination and increase our energy, but it can also heighten our anger our impulsivity, our aggression, and can um, inflate our ego and make it more sensitive and demanding. And so be careful to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Be careful to check that you are thinking in terms of sharing and love and creator consciousness rather than taking or destroyer consciousness, right? Or fearful or smallness, you know, or, or scarcity or doubt, um, keep in mind that you're not serving the will of the lower self. Okay, so let us get into the reading. We're gonna do a Celtic cross with the straightforward oracle, my own custom deck that I've been making. I'm currently in the phase of typing these in in a second draft on the way to hopefully publishing them. It's just step-by-step -step, people. Little plotting steps. Um, a lucrative partnership. A new job, a promising partnership, combining elements to yield great success. There's an opportunity at hand and coming your way that can lead to very abundant results. Examine the opportunities that present themselves with an open mind and curiosity. Take a candid look at what they offer. 
if it feels authentically aligned and I like a hell yeah, then there's something of value for you there. Don't get hung up on making the perfect choice. Regardless of whether it's temporary, long-term, or forever, it will serve you in, the same, in some pivotal way if you meet it with the right consciousness. Don't let limiting beliefs keep you blind to a great opportunity, okay? So that was sort of hinted around in our reading for the weekend. Go on Instagram, Liz underscore Taylor underscore magic, and you can see today's reading. But they're hinted around about like new opportunities or new things presenting themselves, which might feel familiar. And that might've been from the day before yesterday. It, it, it could, I think it may be tied into the romance reading for the week, actually. That something past lifey was coming around, that something felt like it was coming around that was so familiar that it seemed like exactly the same thing again. But the warning was that this time, the circumstances are different, um, as long as you meet it differently. So this, there's an opportunity coming in and maybe it's presented itself and maybe it hasn't yet. Maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't. But don't let your ego scare you out of it. Even if you have to keep an open mind, don't think too far ahead into the future. That was, that was one of the things that came up recently, like today, right, right now, while we've been talking, was that like, don't, don't be so calculated take a risk, right? Throw caution to the wind a little bit, be a little bit more impulsive. So there's something coming in and it might be more than one thing with all this, the expansion of Jupiter going on right now. So be open to what presents itself as an offer, a partnership, an invitation. Um, you know, you don't have to go into business as partners with someone, but if someone offers you like, hey, do you want to maybe do this? Or even this could be like a friendship or an offer of like, you know, somebody asks you on a date and you're like, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe you get the wrong impression of them at first and you're like a little bit like, ah, maybe you should try. It's like the, the, the thing is that really stood out to me about this card was that it's like, don't obsess over making the right or wrong choice. Just put yourself out there and try it. And if it's not right, then course correct. It's not like that big of a deal. We don't have to make these like huge, like <laughs> corrections, like people driving in the movies. <laughs> All over the road they are. Uh, yeah, just, you know, subtle, subtle corrections. If something's not right, then you tried. All right, what is crossing us? And sorry, that was us in the context of this moment. So something is either already presented and we're like questioning whether or not, you know, what we should do about it or something that's coming that we just don't know about yet. Okay, so what is crossing us? What is crossing us? What influence is coming to cross us? Oh, creation phase two. That's funny because a minute ago it showed it to me and it just, I didn't take it because it didn't officially like flip or like make me think it was gonna, but here we are. Um, creation phase two. So, um, activity, lots to do. Nothing is done for me. Honeymoon is over. Awakening uh, to give. My vision is now challenged. Giving outside of your comfort zone going against your nature, um, or going against what comes easily for you, making maximum effort, um, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally. So this is, when it says going against your nature, it's like if you're the kind of person that's like, I'm a workaholic, then maybe you should take more time to focus on like your interior world. If you're the kind of person that is like, quick to rush into things, then maybe you need to practice going against what's easy for you by taking your time and having patience and sitting with your FOMO, okay? Um, but yeah, creation phase two is like act two of the movie where the character is like, I know what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do it. And it's like, you're really giving 110%, you're burning the midnight oil, or you're doing the work to try to change yourself, to be a better person, like all of that stuff. It's like, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and you're really motivated. This is the energy of that Mars moving into Leo coming in. It's like, we are feeling it, so ride that wave. Don't waste it. Don't, don't fall into the Tauran energy. 
shadow of feeling, you know, lazy or complacent or comfortable. Like don't like hang out in your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone right now. Um, making maximum effort, um, a desire to share, a desire to um, be like the light. Pursuit, the process of building the vessel through earning. Where am I hesitant to share? Where am I hesitant to commit? Where am I hesitant to make an effort? So those are things that you should journal. If you are like evaluating in your life right now, what is it that you're trying to do to get into like that overdrive? Okay, let's ask these questions again. Where am I hesitant to share? Where am I hesitant to commit? Where am I hesitant to make an effort? I'm not gonna go into the whole back of the card, but we've already been talking about this. It's time to put rubber to the road. Okay, so the subconscious influence right now um, is find a teacher and a lucky chance. So again, expanding upon what we know, Jupiter, a lucky chance is coming in. We need to find a mentor or a teacher or research or take classes or join a community of like-minded individuals. I know for myself, I need to get back into my to be magnetic work. Um, all of the, like the to be magnetic work that I talk about, um, about manifesting and doing the, um, the inner child uh, workshops, unblock inner child, un in unblock shadow, unblock money, how to manifest, all of those are on a website where you can pay, I think like $30 a month to have free reign of all the workshops all the time. Um, you can go listen to their podcast. It's called Expanded and listen to like their process episodes and you'll get what it is. But if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I've been talking them up for a million years. You also know that I have been saying that I need to be an affiliate for them because I talk them up and all, I get all these people to get on their shit. They have started an affiliate program, you guys. I have manifested an affiliation with To Be Magnetic. So if you do decide to sign up for To Be Magnetic, come to one of my videos and the link is in the description box below. And you can either do a monthly like membership that comes out with your bills like on an automatic payment or you can pay full or whatever. But just, I had to get that out of the way and tell you guys about that. So I can finally be an affiliate, but yeah, use my link. So anyways, I need to get back into my to be magnetic work and do my workshops. I'm starting over with inner child. And then I am really like excited about getting refocused into my Kabbalah classes. I have been like really busy and stuff recently. And so I haven't had as much time to be diligent and focused about regularly like attending and listening and taking, making the most of it all. So those are communities and like mentors and teachers that help me do things. I'm eventually going to have to, you know, learn more about editing and graphics and things like that in order to create this deck to get it published. And then I'll have to learn about self-publishing on Amazon and whatnot. So yeah, um, but yes, whatever you're doing right now, don't be afraid to ask for help and to get a teacher or be teachable, right? Maybe there's someone in your scope that you're like learning from right now and it's not in any official capacity. Like you didn't ask them to be your tutor or your mentor or whatever, but it's just like there are people around you that you're really learning from. So just pay attention, like you're really lucky. Like there are really good learning opportunities or you will have um, like good coaches and mentors or like, random oracles sent your way through life right now, just keep your ears and eyes open that you're being guided. And so the subconscious influence that's affecting us right now is feeling like, like we are working on finding a, a mentor or a guide or a way or a structure that helps us reprogram our subconscious so that we have new neural pathways and that we're making new choices. Uh, right now, in addition to, I wanna go back and do the inner child workshop again with To Be Magnetic, but I'm also reading the book Homecoming. Uh, which is a book about um, reclaiming the inner child. And it's very broken down into like the wounds and the ways that they 
manifest later in life and how to sort of grieve those and heal them so that they don't they aren't like running your subconscious anymore so yes it's probably like to do with reprogramming what you need the teacher for okay so the next card is going to be an influence or lesson from the past that's still kind of having an effect on the situation but is beginning to dissipate needs more planning so you've been planning you know what to do right you may still need to revisit the plan as you go and tweak and go into more detail but don't keep yourself in the planning stage this is in the past so thinking that you need more planning you need more planning you need more planning um, maybe you think, oh, I need to find a teacher. I'm not prepared. I need to be more educated. I need another cert certification. I need another this. You know, I'm like, oh, it's only going to be luck if I really hit it big, you know, because I'm not, I don't have enough wisdom or skill or talent on my own. Like maybe I'm tapping into something here. So stop holding yourself back in the, in the pentacle, in the uh, page of pentacles phase, in the student phase, in the always trying to improve upon before I start phase, right? There were so many years that I felt compelled to start this channel and I didn't because I was being overly obsessive about producing the each episode with a script and lighting and this and that. And now I just slop it up every day. The most important thing is that I get the video made and you can get the message. And I make a video every day now. And for years I didn't and I I I regret that because I should have been started I should have started a few years ago when it was easier to grow on YouTube and now it's not as easy. And so I really have to rely on you guys to please like these videos and share and subscribe to my channel and leave an emoji. New moon Taurus emoji, okay? Um because yeah, I I actions have to be taken on the videos to get them out in the world, so all right, so don't get stuck in the planning phase. Okay, what's crowning us? What has potential to come into being? I think it's this one. Um, you're making too big of a deal of this. So this is great. So what's crowning you right now is the potential to have anxiety about something. Making too big of a deal about it. I think that this is like, just chillax, okay? Just enjoy the moment. Stop overthinking it. Just be in it. Be in the now. Don't plan. Don't pick. Don't, you know, just no big deal. Meander. Let the flower bloom. Don't pry it open. So you're making too big of a deal. Making mountains out of molehills, this isn't as significant as you think. So maybe something is going to have you feeling a little worried or a little neurotic around all the new things that you want to happen for yourself. And you're going to be like, no, I thought it was going to happen. It's not. Um, I've heard so many examples of this uh, over the past few days. And it's, it's like, don't, don't get in a rut about it. Don't get your emotions tangled up. Don't have any expectations right now. Just go have fun and do and put effort and have the desire, but don't have any expectations for anything. Um, and if you need to put your focus on something else, but like still have that desire, but don't let yourself get neurotic and feel like you are lacking because then you will have more lack and you will postpone the fulfillment. Um, what's ahead of you is irrational fears. So again, it's like, don't make a big deal out of this. You are just going to, if you get in a, in a, in a headspace where you're starting to feel you know, what's been coming up in the, in the readings this week is talking about anxious attachment. So if you find yourself getting triggered by an anxious attachment tendencies, then remind yourself that it's the universe is like, Hey, this is no big deal. There's really nothing to be anxious about. Um, it's not what you see, not what it seems. And you're playing it up so much that you're snowballing into irrational fears that are going to become self-fulfilling prophecies. So um, a lesson that you're meant to repeat, right? So this, I'm just going to put that down in you know, this position and I will 
pull a follow-up card on that. But it's like the universe is really assuring us that like, okay, you don't have to overthink this. This situation is presenting itself to you exactly as it should be for a reason with all of the parts and pieces that it has. And don't make a big deal out of it. Don't get all up in your head. Don't get all into worry and irrational fear. Simply just know that this is a lesson that you're meant to repeat. And so you can do it differently this time. So what is it familiar? What does it remind you of? And think about how you did things before and what, like how, how that resulted, right? It probably didn't result in an ideal um, result that you wanted. So what do you think could have been different about it? You know, what, if, what do you think would have been different if you were different? So let's uh, pull one more card about, this is your perception that's affecting you right now. Um, it's time to party. <laughs> so, I love this. This is such a fuck everything, throw caution to the wind kind of reading. It's so Venus. It's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Who cares? Have a good time. You're supposed to be in this moment right now. So lend yourself to it. Don't be impulsive. Don't be hedonistic. Be Have integrity. Stick to the plan to be in alignment with your values, but have fun, be open, be open-minded, be open-hearted, be malleable, be flexible, show up, don't be rigid, don't be closed off, don't be stubborn, don't throw fits to get what you want, just be in the moment and be in the enjoyment and then worry about how everything's going to play out later. Promise yourself you'll worry later. But in the meantime, do your best to show up for yourself and take care of all your, you know, adult responsibilities, but be a little bit more carefree. The universe needs you to be more carefree because we need to be in that lighthearted state to manifest. And we want to be in a seed level of joy as we begin this new, <laughs> this new life. <laughs> other people's effect on us, like other, other people and how they're affecting us, you're fretting. Literally, the, the, the spirit guides of the universe, God, is begging us right now, like in an old movie where like the man is like shaking the woman by the arms and he's like slapping her and he's like, give her a pill, calm her down, and it, like obviously getting shaken and slapped and, and being um, told to calm down is very calming for women, everybody knows that. <laughs> but this is what's happening right now. I feel like, like, stop it, <laughs> stop. Um, yeah, okay, I'll stop fretting. Stop running. Stop worrying. Everything is fine. Everything's great. Assume everything's going to work out just how you want it to. And also assume that nothing is going to look like it's going to work out the way you want it to. Not one bit. And so be pleasantly surprised when things are going well, but also be confident that things are going to go well and that they will. And that if, if things look confusing, no big deal. This is only part of the test. And if you don't let your, your feathers get ruffled, then that will move you through the test um, a whole lot faster. Okay, no fretting. The next card is gonna represent our hopes and fears. A fresh perspective. <laughs> Thank God, hopefully we're not fretting. Let's see what this came out. Oh, forgiveness is what is being asked for. So if you forgive and forgive every one of the debt that they think that you think that they owe you right forgive all of your expectations that you've placed on life on people all that entitlement let it go be grateful and appreciative and serene in this moment forgive forgive it all forgive it all and that will wipe the slate clean to give you a fresh perspective and forgiveness will offload so much static so much weight that is keeping you blocked and dense and weighted down. Okay, so what is our likely outcome? Ooh, okay, listen carefully. Deep listening, open heart, pay attention to others. Who are you listening to? So listen carefully. So to me, this says, don't take things at face value or do. Maybe you can trust the way that, the good way that something is seeming, and you can listen carefully and pay attention 
like whatever you focus on, you will find and, and, and whatever you look for will be confirmed for you. So listen carefully to all the ways that someone or something or a job or whatever it is, pay attention to the information that it's giving you that reveals the truth and the authenticity of what's really there, right? This is like a read between the lines kind of thing, but it seems like things are moving in a positive direction. Um, your limiting beliefs are the issue here. So this is what came up together. So instead of listening, like pay attention to what your limiting beliefs are saying and then throw them out. Change the channel because the limiting beliefs, your fretting, your irrational fears, your assumptions, um, you're feeling like you're not ready, you need more preparation, you're not ready for this, like all of those things are the thing that's holding you back. So listen carefully. The universe may be trying to assure you that things are okay. Like for instance, in, the, in these however many cards this is, um, everything's going to be okay. The only thing, the only way it will not be okay is if you <laughs> suddenly freak out and short circuit and flip out because you are getting entangled in irrational fears that they're not working out okay. So there's your fair warning. That is your, like, that is your way that you can beat the system is just to know that everything's going to be fine. Nothing is going to look fine. <laughs> and then when things do look fine, believe that they are fine, right? This is the one time where it's not like, no, don't look over your shoulder and like things that look okay, maybe they're not. It's like, no, if it looks okay right now, be discerning about that too. That's not about everything. But about these things that we're talking about that are very poignant right now, trust what feels genuine. Okay, let's get some clarification from the Modern Witch Tarot. Okay. Ooh, Three of Cups. <laughs> Fuck. Woo, throwing a party. Throwing a party. Oh my God, the Three of Cups is a party. It's coming together to celebrate with like-minded um, kindred spirits. It's having a good time. It is, you know, celebrating progress. This is a card about engagements, graduation, um, next level of progression in life. Ow, I just hit my kneecap. So yes, great new beginning energy. It's like start off on a fun foot, start off on the right foot, get in a good energy, have a fun summer. It's hot girl summer, have a hot girl summer, treat yourself. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. It's time to party, don't worry so much, have a good time. Join in the fun. Be part of the celebration. Oh my God. Just in case we had any doubts or a bonds of um, a time of celebration, a harmony, a sense of fulfillment and well being is at hand. Um, growing stability. Um, this talks about marriage. Actually, this is the marriage card in the wand suit. So, this <laughs> engagement and marriage. Some of you might be getting engaged to get married, um, or somebody may have just got engaged to get married. Otherwise, if you're not literally getting engaged, this is just a good time to engage with your social life and to lean into the sense of well-being and fulfillment and gratitude and, and serenity and pleasure because you will get more of it. And I, I mean, I think it's really coming tenfold. I mean, I'm just like, I can't believe like the reading. Okay, tower. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Ah, ah, ah. So I think this is a positive tower. Um, I think that a lot of the towers, I mean, lately have been very positive. So this tower is sudden change. And we are in a moment of sudden change. We are in just that. And so maybe you feel like you saw the spark of change happening during that Aries new moon season and during the eclipse season, but like the change didn't happen. Like everything started changing so fast. And then like things just felt like they're still kind of the same, but I think like sudden change is coming. It's on the way. And the next, um, this, this, this is a reading for the whole month, but it, you know, we kind of hone in and over the next two weeks, 
Um, yeah, and it's in the next two weeks that that shadow period of the eclipses and Mercury retrograde will really be dissipating. So things could change very quickly once that happens. All right, and let's see. Let's get one more clarification card from the Modern Witch Tarot for our reading. Oh, the Devil card. So this is, again, about not getting wrapped up in irrational fears. This is um, a Capricorn card. This is also a card about something um, coming to being in a material form. So it's not always about negative patterns. Um, it can be. So like we talked about earlier, warning, you know, don't fall into hedonism and overindulgence and overspending and doing things um, willy-nilly like that this month and being completely overly materialistic. Look at the, the long term, right? Don't rush in. Don't reach for instant gratification. Suppress those impulses so that you can have something of real value and long term fulfillment. In the meantime, you're not trapped. Don't let anyone have control over you. Um, don't let outer circumstances in life have any control over you. You're wanting to practice that ability to be eternal like the light, sustaining unfluctuating in your energy and in your vibration. So the, the trick of the devil is always to make you think that there is no other option, right? And so if you kind of are in a situation where you're like, there's just no other choice, like that right then, that is wrong, that is a lie. Um, there's always another option, there's always another choice. You're never trapped, but you could fall under the illusion this month that you feel trapped, that you perceive yourself as trapped. So it's about untrapping yourself, right? This is about liberation. That is what this tower card is, motherfuckers. This, this freaking party, engaging with all of this fun and pleasure and harmony and bliss over here is gonna happen when we change, when we allow the change to happen and we break the chains that have been binding us and we walk out of whatever has been making us feel trapped and cornered and stifled and despairing and hopeless. We will overcome our adversary and we will overcome our opponent and we're gonna get what we want. We're gonna get what we want and it's gonna be long term, right? One of the things about this Capricorn Devil card is that it's about a material thing that lasts for a long time. Very solid, um, like Tauran energy. So don't shoot yourself in the foot now just for instant gratification and miss out on what you could be you know gaining um, long term you know this happens when you take a job like and you you didn't wait for the one you really wanted to call you back and you're like oh you know i kind of had that happen with um back in the day when i went around looking for internships in production companies I kind of, uh, I got impulsive and chose one quickly and instead of working at the uh, the production company, the Dallas Take Taylor Swift videos before she was popular, like it was like right as she was becoming a star, I ended up working at this place that was sort of like on the way out and I was like, well shit, I made a bad decision there. So take your time, make decisions wisely. Okay, out of the mermaids and dolphins, oh wait, we, we jumped the gun. Okay, before I talk about these cards, First, I'm going to pull a Moonology card and an Angel Wisdom Tarot card. Okay, what do we have for the moon, from the moon? What is our Moonology card? You're very close to achieving your goal. Give us moon. Don't give up. You are very close to achieving your goal. See how close that is to full? very close. So very close to the fulfillment. Fulfillment and bliss and harmony is at hand. It's, it's already here. It's basically here. Don't let anything block it, especially not anything old or toxic or outdated. Okay. One tarot card from the tarot wisdom or angel wisdom tarot. Um, seven of Wands, did I not say that earlier that the month is going to feel very like Seven of Wandsy, and that's that Mars and Leo. It's that Jupiter, or that Mars and uh, Squares Jupiter or whatever it was. Um, stand up for yourself and your beliefs. Have confidence. 
challenge those in power, but also choose your battles wisely. So have a happy, lighthearted confidence and speak up for what you want and what you in what you know your needs are, but don't need be needy, right? Be confident, be self uh self um self-assured and self-sufficient, right? And you know, choose your battles wisely. Be honest, but don't be insubordinate, right? And that's not to say that you need to be submissive to the powers it be, but you need to be wise. Like even King Solomon, one of the most powerful wise men of all time, was he knew when to, you know, use force and when to use, you know, um I, what is the word that I'm looking for? Like peace and winning more bees with honey. Uh, so yeah, uh, don't be afraid to say what you want. Um, you know, in even like, in whether it be in job interviews or in romance or in friendship, people generally really have a lot of attraction and respect for people who speak up for what they want. Um, it's just something that is confident and it shows self-worth. And so if you have an interview that you're going in for like a job opportunity or whatever, be, be, um, you know, honest about what it is that you want. Um, be realistic with yourself before you go in there. Um, are you able to like fulfill, you know, are you giving equal? <laughs> um, or have you earned and paid your dues or are you just like coming out like of left field? Like, Hey, I just want an entry level position and with all the perks. Um, okay, so from the Magical Mermaids and Dolphins, we're checking in on this month's advice for our manifestations. We have Break Free, uh, which is definitely related to this tower and this devil card here. Try different ventures and experiences as a way to grow and learn. So it will also help you let go and not fret if you are exploring many options and you are having fun and, and doing all kinds of different things. Um, so break free, you know, go in different, try different ventures, experiment, whatever, um, but don't get focused and bogged down in like one thing or obsess over any one thing too much because then you'll get neurotic and anxious about it. Um, rest, give it a rest, <laughs> let go. You've been working hard and take, take a nap and take, take some time to rest. So it's like free your mind from being attached to this thing. Um, and just let yourself have fun. And if you participate with this goal, then make it fun. And if not, like try, try not to be gripped about it. Try not to make it work and laborious. But definitely take periods where you walk away from it and you put it down and put your mind completely on other things. It's a, a sign of trust and certainty and faith in the universe. Okay, our next, ooh, positive energy. Surround yourself with positive people and situations and avoid negativity. So definitely um, the, keep your mind set on positive outcomes. Um, don't like don't talk to everybody about these things. Be very wise and mindful about who you talk to about things because depending on where their mindset and their consciousness is, they could bring you down and ruin your um, the, the momentum that you'd created with your confidence, um, with your uh, courage. You know, they could be thinking, you know, oh, I'm just thinking in their best interests by being practical, but like really it's just like, you know, everybody's got their own baggage and stuff. So um, be careful about, you know, who you're surrounding yourself with. The people, like the, the, the closest five people around you are the people who most influence your energy and what kind of person you are. So be mindful about that um, and be positive in thinking and speaking. Keep your words and your focus and your energy set on the outcomes that you want and the things that you appreciate not the things that you wanna pick apart, right? Even if there's something that you wanna tweak or pick apart, think about it in terms of, oh, I would love it if it was like, just a little bit like this. I would love that, I would love this. Think about, I would love this, rather than I don't like that. Um, and then our, oh, okay, here we go. Um, morning affirmations, 
consult an expert came up again. So maybe there is some kind of coach in an area that you need to watch their videos or maybe make an appointment with someone or whatever, but you may need to talk to someone about how to handle the situation or how to get um, more information or skills than you have right now to go forward. And morning affirmations, say positive affirmations each morning to open up the gates of manifestation. And finally, empowerment. You're more powerful than you realize and it's safe to, for you to be powerful. So own that power, own that confidence, own that fire that's coming through and use your morning affirmations. Use your prayers. I do them at night and in the morning, but I say my prayers out loud to the creator and it's very powerful and very effective. Um, I'm sorry that this video is getting really long. I'm going to hurry. Ooh, okay. So our romantic reading, we've got unrequited love. This came up in our weekly reading. This completely seems related to whatever we're fretting about because this may be something that is just like, this is just not the time for it at this moment. Or maybe this person isn't requiting, but maybe there is someone who's right around the corner that will. Um, children, your love life is being affected by children. So most of the time I read this card as your love life is being affected by your inner child. So if there is unrequited love right now, or there is loss of passion in a relationship, it's probably directly related to inner child wounding that needs to be realized and worked on. So maybe all of this, like, don't fret, don't worry. Things are going better than you think but it's time to like take, do the work. It's like, okay, work on the inner child right now because romantically speaking, something's not gonna move forward at this moment. Um, it doesn't mean that it never will. It just means that it's just not the time right now. Uh, but it doesn't mean get in there and solve the problem for a person. That's codependency. It means go and do your own thing. Um, and you know, maintain that wish in your heart, you know, declare it to the creator, but ultimately let it go completely and move forward. Um, romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So yes, back to the unrequited. This is the hunch that I got on Thursday, that it's not that there's not feelings, but there are legitimate issues that will prevent a successful union at the moment. Okay. What is our last card? Wedding. The situation involves marriage. So, somehow it involves marriage. It could involve you keeping yourself free to ultimately meet the person that you want to marry because you're not hung up on an unrequited love. So don't wait around forever on an unrequited love. Um, it could be that there needs to be work done first, but then there is long-term potential there. Again, potential, there's no guarantees, you know? Um, but again, I feel like there, it's like there's feelings, there's mutual feelings with the romantic feelings card, but children are an issue. And for those of you who are parents or single parents, you might be thinking about dating someone, but you have to consider like, am I really going to marry this person? Is this the kind of person who will be a good step parent to my children? So that could be an issue as well. Um, all right, let's get some motherly advice from Mary, Jesus's mom. I'm really wanting to go outside and sit in my garden and have some wine in this last hour of sunset trust. I knew it, I knew it. I knew it was gonna be this card. I know that God in his infinite wisdom and love is answering my prayers right now. So you heard it. Jesus' mom, Mary, says trust. Trust Jesus. <laughs> trust Jesus is working things out. I've been working with Jesus and Mary Magdalene now for the last year to try to prepare me um, for meeting a soulmate, for bringing that, that kind of level of partnership in eventually. And you know it's an adventure to get there. It's like you never know. It's like you can't 
plan ahead. You don't, you got to take a chance. You know, you don't know who you're dealing with until you get to know them. And it takes time, right? We just have to be open. Mary is open. Her arms are open. Okay, so trust. Trust that your prayers are being answered. Pray for help with all of these things. All right, and last word is coming from Jesus. Loving words from Jesus. Jesus gets the final say for the reading. What do you have to tell us, Jesus? What's, uh, what's the good news? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. That's John 14, 27. Peace is the theme of this reading. Um, it can't get any clearer. There's nothing to worry about. You're making too big of a deal about this. Irrational fears. Your limiting beliefs are the issue. You need a fresh perspective. Forgiveness. You are fretting. This is a lesson you're meant to repeat anyway. It's time to party, so just have fun. Throw up your heels. Have fun. Trust and take a chance because Jesus said so. All right, y'all. Good luck this month. I will see you again shortly tomorrow for our oh, Secret Teachings of Jesus for our Saturday Night Secret Sermon. All right, y'all be good, but not too good. Ciao.